Um, okay. One less than or equal to j less than i such that sj is less than si. So I'm saying, and this is started and this is recording, yes. So I'm saying that I'm going to look over all the, the values j such that sj, all the values j between 1 and i minus 1, such that sj is smaller than si, and then I'm going to take the, oh, this is not a set. I need to put a max. So I'm going to look over all the values j between 1 and, um, and i minus 1. OK, so maybe it's easier if I put i minus 1 here. And, um, and I'm going to take the 1 such that aj is largest, so it's the end of the longest subsequence, and then I'm going to add 1 because I'm appending uh, si. Okay? I'm confused. Can you define what you mean by longest increasing subsequence? It's a subsequence, which is increased. So, so each, each number in the subsequence has to be strictly larger than the preceding number. Okay, so here, for example, um, didn't, but we saw increasing subsequences before. Okay, so here, for example, 5, 3 is not an increasing subsequence. 2, 4, 7, 9 is an increasing subsequence. 2, 4, 6, 8 is an increasing subsequence. Uh, 3, 4, 3, 4, yeah, um, 3, 4, 9 is an increasing subsequence. So what's the longest increasing subsequence of this? Um, I'm not sure we'd have to work it out. Uh, well, we can work it out so that people understand. Um, So remember, a subsequence, the terms don't have to be consecutive, highlighting the increasing subsequence. Oh, no. I was just, I was highlighting, um, when I'm computing a, what was this, 8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. When I'm computing a 8, I don't care how big a 7 is, because s 7 is bigger than s 8. So, Maybe I can have a really long subsequence ending with this 9, um, but that doesn't help me to find a long subsequence that ends with that 6, because I can't append the 6 to a subsequence ending with this 9. So I'm only interested when I'm computing AI, I'm only interested, I can, I can take a subsequence that ends with this 5 and append the 6, a subsequence that ends with this 3 and append the 6 a subsequence that ends with this 2, or this 4, or this 1, and append the 6. But I can't take a subsequence that ends with this 7 and append this 6, because then it's not an increasing subsequence. Um, so, let's just do this. Let's just do this example. Do we have time? We have 20 minutes. Eh, not really. Okay, but um, we'll, we'll do some prefix of this. So, um, notice that this can be, um, if this is empty, right, so if, if i is 1, then it's just 1. And what if there is nothing, so when I, take, when I get to this 1 here, there is nothing, which is probably hard to see, when I get to this 1, um, there is nothing to the left of me which is smaller. I can't have taken any of those. So in that case, it's actually going to be, um, we should define uh, A0 as 0. Yeah. So I think if we define 
uh, no, S, S0 is negative infinity and A0 is 0, then it works out that, um, and then we say J is, is 0, then it will work out that I say, okay, if there's nothing that's smaller, then I, I get 1, because, right, if, if, if I can't append the element to any, sub, any preceding subsequence, then I can append it to the empty subsequence, and then I get a subsequence of length 1. Okay, so uh, let's do that. So what's uh, A1 equals 1? A2, there's nothing, there's nothing before it that I can append it to, so it equals 1. A3, there's nothing I can append it to, so A3 equals 1. A4, I don't know if I'm standing in front of this. A4, well, it's max of A2 plus 1. Actually, I could put the I could put the plus 1 outside. It doesn't matter. A3 plus 1. And this is 2, right? Because a2 is 1, a3 is 1, so it doesn't matter. The, the longest subsequence ending with this 4 could be 3, 4, or it could be 2, 4, it doesn't matter. Okay? a5, it's a 1. a6, equals max. A1 plus 1, A, so that everything is smaller than a 7, so plus 1, A6 plus 1. So this, the max is going to be A4 plus 1, so it's going to be A4 is 3, uh, A4 is 2, so it's going to be a 3. So that's saying that the longest increasing subsequence ending with this 7 has length 3. It could be 3, 4, 7, or, or it could be 2, 4, 7, okay? Yes, 5, 7 is an increasing subsequence, but it's not the longest possible ending with that 7, because it's only 2 and we can get 3, okay? A7 is 9. Everything's larger equals max. Okay, I'm gonna put a one dot 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 a six plus one. The max is is a six, so you get plus three. Uh, three plus one is four. At nine, the longest subsequence could be. 3, 4, 7, 9, or it could be 2, 4, 7, 9. If you actually want to obtain the, um, if you want to obtain the optimal binary search tree, then you do the same trick of tracing back through the matrix and figuring out how to split things. So at each cell, you record which choice of root gives you the minimum cost. Here, if you want to be able to actually retrieve the longest, uh, longest increasing subsequence, instead of just figuring out what its length is, then you, you just keep track of which of these gave you the longest. Okay. And again, um, for example, it's probably not, if I, yeah, the, the, the last element is going to be the length of the longest increasing subsequence that ends with that, uh, A, whatever this is, A, A, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. A 13 is going to store the length of the longest subsequent increasing subsequence ending with that 5, but it doesn't have to be the longest increasing subsequence. So again, you have to scan. Okay, so this is 15 minutes, and that's not really enough time, but okay, so do people see, and then so A7 is with the 9, you can get a 4, and then A8. This one's more interesting because now 
we just want this one uh, is the max of a1 a2 and then a5 plus 1 we're not looking at a6 or a7 because they're too big so this one is going to be a 2 plus 1 this is 3 the longest increasing subsequence ending with this 6 is going to be either 2, 4, 6, 3, 4, 6, or 2, 4, 6. You don't get to in include this 7 and this 9. Do people understand? Yes, good, good. Um, so, how long does this take? And then at the end, once you've filled in everything, um, you you do a scan and you find the largest uh, of the, the the largest AI and you say okay that's the longest increasing subsequence so for example it might be that the longest sequence ends at this 8 instead of this 5 or something like that so you, you just need this last scan which just takes linear time how long does this take well for each of these um, we are uh, we're scanning, if we do this naively, we've got for i equals 1 to n, and then for j equals 1 to i minus 1. So that's going to take us quadratic time. Okay. So if this is implemented naively, it's quadratic time. There is a way to do it, I think, in linear time, which, doesn't, which only uses an array. I think, so on the assignment, I said, I'm just going to check that this is recording. I'm paranoid. I think on the assignment, one of the questions I said that the explanations for, you can find the code online, but the explanations are really bad. I think I was actually thinking of this problem. This problem, you can find it online, the, and how to do it without any fancy data structures, just with an array. The explanations are terrible. And when I assigned this, I had people saying, yeah, but it's okay. I, I told them, don't get it off, the, the, don't get it off this web page because you won't understand how it works. And then I'll bust you for cheating. And, uh, and people were coming and saying, no, but it's okay. I didn't, get the, I didn't get the answer off the web page. I got the answer off my friend. Like, that's, you still don't understand it. And if I challenge you on it, you still can't explain it because the person who wrote the answer on the web page couldn't explain it and apparently didn't know how it was working. So I, I, I checked it and it was like, yes, it does work. And I understood it, but I understood it. Yeah, the, the explanations for this on lead code for, it, for doing it in uh, linear time, I think it's linear. Maybe it's logarithm. Maybe it's um, n log n. I think it's linear. But it doesn't use a fancy data structure. Um, I'm going to quickly, in 10 minutes, explain the fancy data structure. 15 minutes. Huh, cool, I have 15 minutes. Okay, I'm just checking, yes. This, this thinks I have 10 minutes, but I'm, okay. So, um, the reason I want to get this data structure in here is because part of the learning objectives of this course are augmenting data structures. So, so far we've seen sort of how you can use fancy data structures to speed up your algorithms. For example, we saw how, um, how to use queues to speed up, to get Van Leeuwen's algorithm. We saw how to use um, union find to speed up Kreskel's algorithm. Um, now, um, but this is the first time we're, we're going to see augmenting data structures. Well, the, the learning objective is designing or augmenting data structures. And so we're going to augment AVL trees. The problem is I can't really talk about that because some of you don't know what an AVL tree is. So, um, but that's not, I mean, it's sort of my problem. It's not exactly my fault. Um, hmm. So, at some point, I'm going to have to have a discussion with... Technically, I'm on the curriculum committee, so I guess sort of it is my fault. But nobody listens to me. I don't say anything. And even when I do say something, people don't listen. So at some point, I have to say, look, this is... I, I want people to know AVL trees. Um, 
But I'm just going to, for people who do know I don't chase, I'm just going to explain quickly how this works. <laughs> um, yeah, um, okay. So what we want, is, and, and the reason we want, this, uh, we want this data structure, and it's not good to look on weak code, is because on the assignment, there's a question about something called longest slowly increasing subsequence. Um, and for that, you really want, um, I don't think you can use the trick on lead code. You really do want this, this fancy data structure. It's called a, a dynamic range max data structure. So I'll just write this down. The problem is, if I write on this board, then I stand right in front of it. If I write here, I can step to the left. If I write here, it feels really, I have to like turn around and step. And this, this feels like a weird dance move or something. It's like you have to rotate left and step backwards and da da da. And I'll probably kick my teeth. Okay. So, um, a dynamic. The way to think of this is you you have let's say you have um, a grid so point uh, well you have sort of the two dimensional plane so let's think about integers right now um, positive integers ideally so what you can store is points right? so you have point one five. You have point six two. Actually, if I had been paying attention, I would have written down the points that were for our example, but but okay, whatever. So you have point three ten. Okay, so x and y points. Right? Now what you can do with a range max data structure is give it some interval, say, two, you give it a horizontal interval, say, two to eight, and it will give you the highest point in that interval. set of x, y points, and this is a dynamic set. Now actually, for this, for this application, we only need it to be something called semi-dynamic, which means you can insert, you insert, but you don't have to be able to delete. But you can actually make this fully dynamic, it doesn't change anything. Of x, y points, such that, Given a horizontal range, it returns the highest point in that range. So you can see that, for example, if I gave you, um, if I give you two to eight, it will give me back three ten. Okay. If I gave you um, five to eight, it would give me back six two. If I gave you zero to one, it would give me back one five. If I give you zero to ten, it will give me back three ten. Okay. And then you can insert points, right? If I insert a point here, so this is 4, 6, then if I query 2, 8, it still gives me back 3, 10. If I query 
uh, 4, 8, it will give me back 4, 6. Okay? Do people, uh, do people understand what a range max data structure does? You can insert, you can delete, you can, and then you can query by giving it a horizontal range and it gives you back the highest point in that range. Okay, how could you use a dynamic, and let's suppose, so let's just suppose you have a dynamic range max data structure and it works, all the operations take logarithmic time. Logarithmic in n, where n is the number of points currently on your, in, currently stored. So what you can do is um, for each of these AIs that you compute, you take AI and SI and you say, um, can I erase some of this? I'm going to erase this. Okay, this, this sequence is actually kind of a mess. I want that definition, but I, and I want this. Do people remember this by now? I hope so. Because I have like, I have eight minutes left. Okay, so to compute AI, what we're going to do, um, now actually, this is a special case, and this is why the, 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 co the, the trick on leak code works, because we all, our, our horizontal range is always uh, half closed. It always goes from minus infinity, in this application, it always goes from minus infinity to something. So we want um, the, uh, the x coordinate is going to be the s value. Okay. So for AI, no, I'm going to write down the invariant. So the invariant, when processing SI, our grid contains the points S, J, a, J. Okay, so the S, J is the, the, the S value is the X coordinate and the, the, the Y value is the A. Uh, I, yeah, I felt fine, like my shoulder is a bit sore, but otherwise I, I don't understand why people keep asking me for extensions just because they got vaccinated. But now, now I have more sympathy. This lecture is feeling harder than, than it usually does. Um, so, okay, the S value is the X coordinate, the A value is the Y coordinate, um, and so for J less than I. Okay, so now what we do is we ask for, we ask for the highest point in the horizontal range we're going to say minus infinity to um, okay I can either make this semi-open right which means that it's, it goes up to SI, but doesn't quite include it. Or we can agree that the, the values are integers, in which case I can just make this SI minus one. So I'm gonna make this semi-open, just to make it nice and general, so that this is saying, I'm asking for the highest point in the horizontal range, which um, usually when you're doing this, you, you draw a, a dashed line. Right, where you say, okay, I have some, 
Ja, 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 ja. Um, so, so you know, if I make this a dashed line, it means that it's that's everything up to eight, but I don't want eight. Okay, so um, running out of time. Um, so actually, putting the cap back on, I think that's my sprained elbow. I don't think that's my my injected shoulder. Okay, so do, do people see that we ask for the highest point? This is asking for the maximum AJ value that's associated with an SJ value, which is less than SI, which is the thing that was here and I erased. So we ask for that point. So let's say that, uh, so let's say that we get that point. Then we take the, the AJ value from that point. So let's say that what this is the highest point S, okay, I'm just going to put SK, AK, and then we say, okay, so AI equals AK plus 1, AK plus 1. If this comes back and says the range is empty, there is no point, that means we don't have any value that's smaller than SI, so we start an we start an empty uh, we have an empty subsequence. So we start a subsequence with just SI. Right? So AI equals AK plus one. Okay, and then we insert point SI AI. So notice, as I said, this is semi-dynamic. We never delete, um, and uh, so how long does this take? Well, the query takes logarithmic time, the insertion takes logarithmic time. We have n values, so it's going to take n log n time. So what I'm not apparently going to do today is tell you. Um, you can imagine. Okay, so this I have like two minutes left. This is going to be, and this, is this going to keep, yeah, I have two and a half minutes left on the little camera, and then once that stops recording, the class is definitely over. Um, so you can think if you had a binary search tree, right, in a binary search tree, if you, if you know the sizes of the subtrees, you can sort of find the path to the ith leaf, and you can find the path to the jth leaf. And so everything between those two paths, so if you, if you have a binary search tree, you need this sort of for the assignment. I'll put something in the lecture notes. If you want, if the leaves are, so if you want five, and then over here you want 16, so this is key 16, you can find the path where stuff on this path is, stuff over here is less than 5. And then you can find this path. Stuff over here is greater than 16. And then here, 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 16. So this is all this stuff in here. So if what, you can, if what you do is you take a binary search tree, you, make, you store that the keys are the x-coordinates. Right? So you can, if the keys are the x-coordinates, you can find the part of the tree, uh, you can find these two paths where the, 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 all, the, key, all the, the nodes in there are storing pairs where the x-coordinate is, is in the range you want. And then the trick is to store at each vertex, not as the key, the key is the x-coordinate, you store the maximum y-value in the subtree. So now, once you've found this range, you can find you, uh, these two paths, you can trace down them, and you can find all of the 
the, uh, there's a logarithmic number of vertices such that their subtrees are completely contained within this region. And then, so you're taking, um, you're taking, um,